everyone and welcome back as you guys can see we are finally here in the reptile room again so I guess I'm just gonna give a quick explanation for what we're going to be doing in today's video but basically we're going to be upgrading two geckos so back in December if you guys watched my video you may know that I picked up two gargoyle geckos as a rescue my plans were never to keep these geckos long term I kind of wanted to keep them for a little bit and feed them because they were both underweight and having some health issues so I wanted to get them healthy again and then uh, rehome them to new owners however it's been a few months and I still have them with me both of the geckos are really really healthy now um, one of them does have a spinal curve but besides that they're doing great both are eating on their own having no issues but I decided that I wanted to upgrade them. So these guys used to be set up in two bin enclosures. These were the same enclosures I showed in my video where I got them. And they were set up in those bins and the bins worked great. They provided them with all of their needs. But I thought that I could do something a little bit nicer that looked better, maybe uh, provided them with a bit more. So that's what we're doing today. However, there is a little bit of a challenge, I guess, because as many of you know, we are currently going through a pandemic, which means I can't really go to the pet store or anything like that. And yes, I know online stores are still open and you can order and everything, but I thought that it would be a really fun idea to try to set up these two gargoyle gecko enclosures using only supplies that I have around the house since I can't really go out and buy anything. So that's what I did. So these enclosures aren't going to be set up bioactive or anything. So I have the two enclosures ready to go, but now I need to start gathering some supplies and getting the geckos moved out of their current enclosures and all of that. So with all of this said, let's just go ahead and get right on into the video and start setting up those gecko enclosures and seeing what we can come up with. So the two gargoyle geckos I have are currently in these bins that you see right there. You can see one of the geckos right there. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take the geckos out of the bins and then put them in uh, just those Tupperware containers, just as like a temporary holding container because I want to take all the plants and vines and everything that are currently in those bins out because I'll likely end up reusing them in those enclosures. These here are the two exoterras that I have. They both have tops as well. I have the tops right there. But these are the two enclosures that we're going to be setting up. So these are both 12 by 12 by 18 exoterra. So in my opinion, that is a good size for like juvenile and sub-adult gargoyle geckos, crested geckos, and other similar geckos. So I already went ahead and I cleaned out both of these enclosures entirely because these enclosures did used to be used for other animals and now we're just gonna go ahead and start trying to find supplies that I can use to set up some nice gargoyle gecko enclosures. So we have the two geckos right here. So they're just in these little Tupperware containers, obviously temporarily. They'll basically only be in here as long as it takes me to set up their new enclosures, which will not be that long. This guy did leave a little poop there though, didn't ya? Yeah. Left a nice little poop on the container. This is basically just the stuff that came out of the bins that they were currently in. So I just went ahead and cleaned those out. And then I took all of the stuff out of it and this is what we have. So there's some fake plants, some vines, um, a brand. So like I said, that's just what came out of their previous enclosures. I don't know if I'll end up using all of this, any of it, some of it, we'll see because it depends what else I can find around the house that would be good for their enclosures. So the first place I'm obviously going to look is just my whole pet supplies storage area. So this has a lot of stuff that I could use. This is just where I store basically everything I have. So I have things like substrate, which I will obviously be using. Uh, that there, some reptile supplies. That's all reptile supplies. The bottom is more small mammal stuff. And then over here, this is also mostly reptile supplies. You can see um, another upgrade I'm working on. This is going to be my leashes enclosure. There's some wood there. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and start going through everything and just seeing what I can use. The first thing that catches my eye is this background right here. This is just a, it's like a cork tile background and this is made for the 12 by 12 by 18s. I wish I had two of them, but I do only have the one, but I am going to bring this over and swap it there with the rest of the stuff. So even though I'm not a huge fan of these backgrounds, I would rather this background than no background. 
So this again is also a 12 by 18 background. So I'm going to grab this so then I can use this one on the other enclosure. So then at least they both have a background. I'm gonna go ahead and pick out some substrates that I wanna use. I'm going to take this sphagnum moss. I'm going to take this repti bark. I will take this big bag of, what is this one? Jungle mix. And then I'm going to take this bit of forest floor. I wish that I had more of this, but this amount will do for now. The next thing I want to look for is just some more potential decor for these enclosures. So obviously I have all that stuff there, but I think I might have some more stuff in these bins that I might like to use. So first I'm going to go ahead and bring this blue bin out and we'll sort through that and then we'll go through that one. So right away when I open the bin up, this is what I see. Right off the bat, it's not looking too promising. I definitely want to take this branch that can go over there. But I'm not seeing a whole lot else that I really would like to use in a gargoyle gecko enclosure. A lot of this stuff seems to just be like water dishes and there's some like heat lamps. So some hides but those are more for like terrestrial animals so I think the only thing I'm gonna take out of this bin was that branch so I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back and then I will take that one out and see what's in there all right and here's what this enclosure looks like at first glance there's not a ton of stuff in here either I'm definitely going to take this bag of leaf litter though so I'll bring that over and then I'm also going to take this piece of wood here I don't know if I'll end up using this but I am gonna bring it over and yeah I think that's all I want to take from this one the rest of the stuff I don't think would really be useful this here just has a bunch of wood and stuff in it unfortunately though I don't actually think I'm going to have too much that I can use on those enclosures just because most of these branches are long most of them are at least two or three feet but I'm gonna go ahead and see what there is just in case I come across something these branches I have here are definitely small enough to fit in the enclosure. These are basically just um, old dead ficus plants, but I don't know if I'll use these because they are kind of thin, like they don't really support the weight of a gecko too well, but I'm gonna bring them over anyways because I might end up really liking them. And this fake vine here I will bring over as well. I really do like these vines. Again, I don't know if it's great for gargoyle gecko necessarily, but it is a good vine, so I will take it over. And I think this is the last thing that I found over there that I'm gonna bring over. This is just a piece of wood, and I know that this does fit in those terrariums because I used this in a 12 by 12 by 18 before. So I'm gonna bring this over. This one might work better for gargoyle gecko than like some of the thinner ones. So yeah, let's take this over. So these are the last two things I'm going to bring over for the gecko enclosures. And that is just, um, right here is just a tub of coconut fiber. So these were like the bricks that I wet and let them do their thing. I did that a little while ago, which is why it's dry right now. And then I also found some more branches. So I'm gonna bring all of this stuff over. Probably won't use it all, but I'm gonna bring it over to have. All right, now that everything is over here, let's just do a quick little glance at everything we have again. So obviously we have the two enclosures, one for each gecko. The lids for those are right up here. I did bring a background for each one and then there's some fake plants and some fake vines over there. And then we have some like real wood and vines and whatnot over here. And then over here we have the substrate. So what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna start setting one up and actually like explain what I'm doing with the first one. So probably this one here, just so you guys can hear me and get an idea. And then when we move on to the second one, I probably Probably won't talk at all and maybe just play some music or something just because if I explained what I was doing twice it would probably get pretty repetitive because they are going to be very similar obviously there will be some differences but they're gonna be very similar in style because they are both for a juvenile gargoyle gecko so yeah let's just go ahead and start setting this one up so the first thing that I'm going to do with this enclosure here is to start adding the substrate so I'm not doing bioactive with these enclosures right now, like I mentioned earlier. So I'm not putting in any sort of drainage layer or really even any special substrate mix for this matter. Right now I'm adding the Zilla Jungle Mix in. This personally is one of my favorite substrates to use for reptiles that do need like a higher humidity and do well on a dirt like substrate. 
Uh, I definitely like this way better than just like cocoa fiber or something. I think it's a lot better. But I'm not going to be using just this. I am going to be mixing some Repta Bark and some Cypress Mulch in with it as well and a little bit of sphagnum moss but I do want this to be the majority of my substrate so I think I'm going to put about that much in and then start adding some I'm also going to add a little bit of cocoa fiber I'm not going to add a whole lot of this because I'm not a huge fan but it does work well mixed in with other substrates so I'm going to add a couple handfuls of that and I also just entirely realized that I forgot to put the background in so i'm going to move the substrate to the front if i can to hopefully be able to allow me to put the background in without making a big mess or anything ideally you'd want to put the background in first but i forgot and there we go the background is all in place now the lighting on this is kind of weird so i do apologize but the background is in place. Now I'm going to add a little bit of cypress mulch into the substrate mix. I'm not going to be adding a lot because I don't have a ton of this and I want to like evenly distribute it between the two enclosures. So I think that this is all I'm going to add for that. And then I'm also going to add a few handfuls of rescue bark. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of sphagnum moss, and I'm going to kind of crumple this up as I'm doing it because I don't want really big chunks of it. I prefer to have smaller pieces, personally. I think it mixes better with the substrate that way. And then lastly, I'm going to add some leaf litter. And so this is what I'm all going to mix up. I like adding some leaf litter into what I'm mixing and not just on top of it. I think it looks a little bit more natural. So now I'm just going to go ahead and mix all of this up. And that's what it looks like now. So personally, I'm really happy with the way that turned out, especially since I'm only using supplies that I already had. Uh, I think that it's a pretty good substrate mix. I like the options that I had to work with, and I think that this will work really well for my gecko. So there we have that. So now that the substrate is done, I guess we can move on into some more exciting things like actually setting up the enclosure. So for this one, I'm thinking I want to use that recent piece of wood that I showed you guys. This one right here, kind of as the centerpiece for the enclosure. I think that it'll work really well. It'll sit just like that and then it provides a lot of climbing space for the gecko, lots of branches to climb on. I wouldn't just use this as like your only climbing options, but for one piece of wood, I do think that provides some pretty good options. But since I do want some more climbing options, I think I'm going to start working with these like fake vines that I have and configuring those in the enclosure to hopefully provide some more climbing space for the gecko. Okay, so I got that vinyl in. I think that's all I'm going to do for wood and vines for this enclosure, at least for right now. So now I think I'm going to go ahead and start working with the plants that I have. So I don't really have any like vision in mind for this. So I'm just gonna start grabbing plants and start putting them in and hoping something looks nice. Okay, so here's what I came up with for that enclosure. Personally, I really, really like the way that it turned out and I think it's gonna look so much better once I get it up on the shelf and under the light and it's just like lit up and way brighter. Uh, but this is what we're working with right now. I think I'm gonna leave it just like that for the time being. And then once I get it under the light and I see it lit up and everything, maybe I'll make adjustments. But for now, we're going to leave it like that. And then I'm going to move on to this enclosure. Like I said, I'm not going to walk you guys through this one step by step because it would probably be really repetitive. But I will still be recording it so you guys can still watch me do that.
Okay, so here's what the two look like right now. I think that I'm happy with them. Like I said, I do want to get them and put them under the light and get like a better look at them all lit up and then see if I want to change anything. But for the most part, I think I'm happy. The only things that I really wish that I had that I don't right now are feeding ledges. When they were in the bins, I basically just created a spot using the vines and plants where I could put their food cups, which is probably what I'll continue doing. Next thing I'm gonna do is just bring these enclosures over to the shelf and then get them set up and get the lights on them. And then we'll take a look at them there. So here are the enclosures side by side on the shelf with the lights and everything. I personally am liking how they look. I'm gonna go ahead and open them up. Now I obviously don't like these enclosures as much as I like a lot of the more naturalistic enclosures I've built. However, I do still like the way that these turned out. I think that they will function really well for my geckos. And with the circumstances that I was doing this with, you know, only using supplies that I have at my house, I think that they turned out pretty well personally. I think that these will do my geckos well. They do provide them with a lot of areas to climb and move and jump and explore as well as places that they can hide in the cover of the leaves and stuff so now they're basically ready for the geckos before I do that I am going to go ahead and mist each enclosure down with some water just to kind of freshen everything up obviously this like soil in each of the enclosures has never been misted before so I think it'll be beneficial to do that so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and mist the enclosures down and then we will add the geckos in All right, so I went ahead and I grabbed both geckos, so now we're going to be putting them in their enclosure. So I'm just gonna go ahead and we'll get this guy put in his home. This is so hard to do with one hand. So here's a look at this guy before we put him in his enclosure. Really, really pretty patterns here. It might be hard to see on camera, but this guy actually has a little bit of a spinal kink. If you see his spine isn't completely straight. It doesn't seem to bother him in any way though. Uh, he still seems completely normal otherwise. So I'm not too worried about him, but you can kind of tell by looking at him from the top that something's a little weird with his spine. But like I said, it doesn't bother him at all. So we're gonna go ahead now and let him into his enclosure. Oh, go on little guy. Hey, there you go, he jumped right in. <laughs> so there, that's what he looks like inside of his enclosure, so you can kind of get a good size comparison there. So in my opinion, this is a good size for him. I think he'll do really, really well in here, and I think that he'll enjoy this new enclosure. A big benefit to having them in these enclosures compared to the bin enclosures is now they have a UV light on them. So up at the top there, that is a 5.0 UVB. So I think that these guys will definitely benefit from that for sure. So now that this guy's all safe in his enclosure, let's go ahead and get the next guy out. He jumped right into his enclosure before I could even like get a good look at him for you guys. So there he is back there. He literally like, as soon as I opened the container, just hopped right into the enclosure. Guess that's a good sign. At least he wants to be in there and hopefully feels safe in there. He did poop in the container, so we will be washing that. But both geckos are in their enclosures now, so hopefully uh, they'll come out a bit more and explore around, and hopefully they will enjoy these new enclosures. Last thing I'm going to do for these enclosures now before I end the video is basically just prepare some food for the geckos. So I'm going to prepare a cup of Pangea for each of them. Now these guys do also eat insects, but it's not their insect day today. So for now, just going to be doing Pangea. Okay, so I have the two cups of Pangea here. So now I just wanna put it in the enclosure somewhere that I think the gecko will easily find it. I think for this one, I'm just going to put it right there. Oh, I'm sorry, did I scare you? As I previously mentioned, I do wish that I had the feeding ledges, but unfortunately I just don't have any on hand right now, so I do have to order those. So they likely won't be in for a couple of days or weeks, who knows how long shipping is taking right now. But I will get them eventually, but until then, it's still pretty easy to find spots in these enclosures where I can put 
their food cups where they can find it. All right, so I think that that's really all I have for the video. Uh, you guys got to see the geckos and their new enclosures. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, this was a pretty fun thing to do, trying to just create the enclosures without um, being able to go out and buy any supplies and working strictly with what I already have. It was pretty cool. I challenge some of you guys, if you guys are home, bored, stuck in quarantine, get creative with your animals in their enclosures, obviously only doing things that are safe and good for the animals, you know, but get creative, do, do things with your pets. You know, what else are we gonna do when we're locked at home? So all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It would mean a ton to me if you did. Also be sure to check out all of my social media. All of that is always just in the description of my video down below, but I would love to have you guys join me over on Twitter or Instagram or whatever you guys enjoy using. So please go and check that out if you would like to. All of that said, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video.